All right, today we're going to be uh, adjusting the air pressure in this bladder storage tank here for my well pump, as well as adjusting the uh, pressure switch. Uh, last weekend, my son and I replaced my deep well pump, and I have a video on that. I'll link to that at the end of this one. Uh, but prior to that, I had started a video on adjusting this pressure switch, and in that process, I determined that the pressure switch was not the problem, in fact, that the well pump needed to be replaced. So I scrapped that video because I couldn't actually get through it the way I wanted to, and we're going to do it again here. Uh, and I also have a video on how on replacing the pressure switch, and I'll probably piece that together at some point also. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to adjust the uh, pressure in the tank, and then we're going to uh, calibrate and adjust the uh, pressure switch itself. All right. All right, to get started, we're going to uh, shut the power off to our water pump here. All right, next I'm going to uh, shut the water off to the home because we don't want to have to fill and drain the household plumbing every time we cycle the pump. And then I've got a, a water hose hooked up here and I'm just going to drain all of the water out of the storage tank until we have zero pressure. All right, that's what we want right there. All right, next we need to determine what your pressure switch should be set to. Um, or you could decide what you want to set it to. Uh, keep in mind that usually there's a 20 pound differential. They're usually sold as 20, 40, 30, 50, or 40, 60. Uh, and it's recommended to stay within that 20 pound differential. If you um, increase the differential too much, you could actually burst the bladder in your tank because it's not designed to hold uh, that much more water, okay? So we're just gonna pull the cap here. If you don't have a decal on the outside of your tank or, or some other way of determining what your pressure switch is, you could actually um, pull the cover of the pressure switch and usually it'll say, and hopefully I can get a shot of it there, and I'll try to highlight it, but it says 3050 there, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to stick with that necessarily. Just keep in mind that if you increase the pressure uh, too much, and your submersible pump is, is down at a particular level, it's gonna work the pump harder, right? Now I just put a three quarter horse in where I had a half horse, uh, so I could probably stand to increase mine, you know, I could even go to 4060 without any issue, but uh, what we'll do is we'll just set it to what it's supposed to be here for today, just to give you the idea, but keep in mind that you can adjust it uh, within reason, uh, and if you adjust it too much, uh, you could cause additional problems, such as working the pump too hard, um, bursting the bladder in your tank. Uh, also, your uh, your faucets and so forth. If you go too high with your pressure, you can create uh, uh, problems with those. They can start to leak. All right. So next thing we're going to do here is check and see where our pressure is in our bladder storage tank. It should be approximately two pounds below our cut in point, which would be uh, thirty pounds. So we'd, we'd set it to twenty eight. All right, let's talk about the tank a little bit here before we get started. I refer to this as a bladder storage tank. It's because it's got a rubber bladder. Think of it like a balloon. And the bottom portion of the tank and then the top portion of the tank has an air charge that we uh, we can adjust using a, a tire pump, a foot pump, hand pump, a small compressor, and use a regular tire gauge to, uh, to check that pressure. There are other types of storage tanks, uh, glass-lined air over water tank, is another type of tank, but I would say that most modern uh, well pump installations are going to have a bladder type tank. Okay, it serves two purposes. Uh, first and primary purpose that it serves is it creates a uh, or provides a constant back pressure on your household plumbing um, so that your well pump is not cycling all the time. If you had no back pressure, uh, you're, as soon as you open a, a faucet, it would drain down. Uh, fairly quickly and then your pump would kick on and then the other purpose that it serves is it, it's a reservoir that holds water and if you think of it like this the larger tank you have the more time in between pump cycles because it's going to take longer to draw that water down uh, or pressure down say from the 50 pounds to the 30 pounds okay hopefully that'll make more sense once we get started here so let's see where we're at now just so you know I did uh, every parameter we're going to adjust I'm also throwing out um, you know on purpose so this one's got 26.2 we want to be at just about 28 because we're going to set it to 30 pounds on the cut in and you don't have to be exact uh, but we we happen to be exact on this one 
All right, one other thing to keep in mind is that if your storage tank is in a location that has large temperature swings, possibly due to seasonal temperatures and so forth, you may want to check it a few times a year. Uh, but it's recommended to check it uh, at least once a year because they will lose pressure and sometimes the bladder will burst uh, and that'll also cause problems. Um, and we can cover that maybe in another video. But let's go ahead and adjust the pressure switch now. All right, this next uh, portion of the video, I'm just going to throw out a, a little word of caution. Um, th the process that you use largely depends on your comfort level and your environment, okay? We're going to flip the breaker on here, and I typically would not install the cover because I'm going to be working under there. But with that said, uh, especially if you have a 240-volt pump like I have, and we'll look at the breaker here, and I'll help you determine... Uh, if you have a 120 or 240, but you know, it would be horrible to go flip the breaker on and you have a dog or a child and they come in and uh, touch those wires, it's going to be a bad situation, okay? I'm in a boiler room, nobody's out here, I'm also comfortable and understand how this works. Use uh, caution that's appropriate for your comfort level. Uh, it may take a little longer to put the cover on every time you flip the breaker on. Uh, let it build pressure and you have to shut the breaker off and adjust the switch. Um, so I'm going to remind you throughout the process that I'm shutting the breaker on or, or t shutting it off or turning it on. Um, but I may not show every step because it's going to take longer. Um, but in all sincerity, use caution and don't venture outside of your comfort level. If you want the cover on every time the breaker's on, then put the cover on every time the breaker's on. That's 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 what I would recommend. And again, it's your environment. If you have children or animals or other people, um, you just can't be too safe. All right, let's go uh, throw the breaker on. All right, let's throw the breaker here. Okay, and uh, you see how this one's doubled up? Okay, that's because uh, each one of these hits a different leg of the panel. Okay, that gives us 240 volts, where these singles are 120 volts. Okay, so it's it's... Really, you need to use the same amount of caution if you're dealing with 120 or 240. Just keep in mind that 240 is more apt to kill you than 120. All right, be safe. All right, let's see where this thing kicks off. Pretty close to 50. We're going to let it drain down and see where it kicks in. I have the, uh, the tap open here. All right, right at 30. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to shut the water off. Okay, so that we don't drain it all out here. Okay, I'm going to shut my breaker off before we make the adjustments. And again, I've adjusted it with power to it. I know a lot of other people adjust the pressure switches with power. Um, but be safe and do not work outside of your comfort level and your environment. Uh, so I'm going to remind you, at this point, you should shut the breaker off. If you choose not to do so, work cautiously, all right? All right, let's talk about the pressure switch here. Um, I do have some footage of cleaning the pressure switch, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of, I'm going to put that in a little frame as I speak here. Uh, these are contacts, and you can use contact cleaner and a little wire brush or some emery cloth and kind of clean them up. Um, I subsequently uh, replace the pressure switch so I don't need to clean them but uh, before replacing it that's something you could try if you're having issues with your pressure switch okay this large spring here on the square D uh, pressure switch um, adjust the cut in and cut out pressure up or down okay so they'll move together if we wind it in or clockwise we're increasing that pressure right so we were cutting in at about 30 pounds which which was right if I dial it in Right? It may be going to 31, 32 pounds. It takes quite a bit to, to move it. Um, and the cut out is going to move along with that. Now our cut out pressure was low. It was cutting out before 50 pounds. So I use this one to adjust the cut out pressure. Okay, I would dial that in to increase it. Um, what I typically do, because I've found that when you adjust this, sometimes the differential, it, it's not maintained. I'm not sure why that is. It's supposed to work that way, but you know, sometimes it's thrown off a little bit. So I usually use this one here. I dial in the, the low pressure. So I dial in so I know that it's cutting in at the correct pressure. So 30 pounds is where I'd want to dial this into. Then 
I go and adjust the cut out pressure using this one, making sure that it, it's cutting out at the 50 pounds or the 20 pound differential, whatever that is. So I usually use this one to adjust the cut in first, even though it's really, it's really adjusting both. And then I verify that my cut out pressure is 20 pounds away, and if it's not, I use the small spring to adjust that cut out. So let me go ahead and dial that in now that I've given each of them a crank. I'm sure we're not, uh, we're not dialed in correctly here. And again, um, you can do this with power on, and actually it would make the process go a little more quickly because we could have our, our hose running, and we could actually have that uh, pump running, and then we could watch it kick in and out, kick in and out. But keep in mind that if you're using, say, a socket with an extension and you drop that extension across those terminals, um, it's not going to be good. So uh, safety first uh, and don't worry about how long it takes. All right, let me get it dialed in here and see if we can get it working the way it should be. All right, I'm going to draw the uh, tank down here to see where the pump kicks in. We'll listen for it. Oh, we're right there, 30 pounds. All right, let's see where it uh, kicks out. Okay, so we're still low on our cutout point. I'm going to shut the breaker off and make an adjustment. All right, we were probably uh, two or three pounds low on our cutout point, so I'm going to go on to the small spring and we're going to give that about a half a turn here and see where that uh, leaves us. All right, we're drawing down here. Let's verify that our cut in and cut out points are correct. Um, hopefully this video has been helpful. Give me that thumbs up if you did find it helpful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Again, I have a uh, video on replacing the submersible deep well pump. And I'll link to that at the end of this one. And at some point I may even post the uh, replacement of the pressure switch video even though it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's nice to have all of uh, all the videos up there. Uh, leave questions and comments below. I always appreciate uh, the feedback as well. If there's something I could have done differently, uh, something I didn't cover, please leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer those as best I can. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and share. I never ask people to do that, but you know, trying to grow the channel. Let's see, 50 pounds is what we're looking for. And we're right there. Hey, thanks for watching. Have fun and be safe. Seriously, this is uh, not something to mess around with. Let's watch it kick in and out here on the closing screen.